Hello everyone, it's time to add some drum modules to the case. My old Boss DR660 works fine, but I'm craving for more analog drums and a Roland tier 909 or 808 are very much out of reach for me. The Behringer clones like the RD9 would do the job of course, and uh, I have been very close to buying one <laughs> at uh, a couple of occasions. But uh, I'm into DIYing, so my approach is to base something on the 909 from Hex Inverter and the 9090 project, with my own additional tweaks of course. The TR909 schematic diagram can be a bit overwhelming when looking at it for the first time, but everything is nicely drawn into functional blocks and the bass drum and the mysterious noise generator seems like a good place to start. Let's begin the build with a noise generator. The 4006 ICs seems to be the centerpiece in this design, but the data sheets doesn't really tell us much of what it's doing. However, they are connected together with some XOR gates to form a linear feedback shift register, or LFSR for short. The primary use of an LFSR is as a pseudo random number generator, which in our case will be a random stream of ones and zeros that will make a pretty good noise source. But how does this work? If we look at the schematic diagram again, the noise generator consists of three different sub-modules. A 300 kHz clock generator, a power on reset circuit, and the LFSR itself. The clock generator is of course used to provide a clock to the shift register of the LFSR. The power on reset circuit is important. It feeds one into the shift register at startup to give the shift register a good starting point. If all the register bits are zero at startup, the LFSR will die of starvation and never produce a random stream. Okay, but what is going on inside the LFSR when the clock is running? Let's have a closer look at the shift register and the feedback path with the XOR gate. First of all, we need to fill the LFSR with a startup value, as already mentioned. The XOR gate is connected to the output register 13 and 31, and the result is fed back to the input of the first register. At first, it doesn't seem to be very random at all, but after a while the XOR gate starts to feed back ones and zeros, and we see that the last bit of the shift register starts to change and act more random. Alright, next step is to get hold of a couple of 4006s, which can be a challenge. This is an obsolete part and most component distributors doesn't carry it anymore. But you can try your luck at your local electronics shop or on eBay or AliExpress. They can be quite expensive, I had to pay 2 euro each for them. So, how does it sound? After all, that is the most important thing, right? I have breadboarded the 4006 LFSR and a standard NPN transistor type noise generator that I'm sampling at the same rate as the LFSR using a D flip flop. As you can hear, there is a quite a big difference in noise characteristics. So, the next experiment was to build an LFSR using easily available components, instead of the 4006. I decided to use the 4015 8-bit shift registers. The downside is that I need 4 pieces of 4015 to build up a shift register with the same length. But on the other hand, the complete LFSR costs less than a euro if I use SMT components. It's not possible to hear any difference between them. And it shouldn't be any difference, since they are bit exact. So, that's it for the first episode. Next video will be about the design of the actual 909 kick, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching, and I see you soon again. Goodbye.